Today, I want to begin a new series entitled The Replacement Files. These videos will cover a particular topic that's very relevant to me, the original race swapping of genre characters. The idea for this series came about while I was watching another YouTube channel, and I won't mention the name here. And the host complained about the ongoing race swapping of existing genre characters by Disney and other studios. But the thing that got me really thinking and wanting to do this series was a comment made by a guest on the video. Basically, this guest stated that Disney, or any of the other studios for that matter, would never think of swapping out a black character, in this particular case, with a straight white male. Immediately, I said to myself, that's not true. And it saddened me that the host and the guest either didn't know Hollywood history and practices, or they didn't care because it didn't affect their group. And so in this series, I wanna provide some popular examples of this very thing being done. I think it's important to know our history and understand that Hollywood will swap out anyone at any time. The very first example that I wanna cover is none other than the show Battlestar Galactica. In particular, the 2009 reboot. I saw the original when it first came out and I thought it was the greatest thing I had ever seen. And believe it or not, Battlestar Galactica came out after the first Star Wars movie and it actually had better space battles than Star Wars, in my humble opinion. Now, part of the reason was VFX artist John Dykstra, who worked on Star Wars and brought his skills and apparently some of the special effects equipment that he helped develop for Lucas to his job on Battlestar Galactica. When Lucasfilm found out, they actually sued Dykstra and he had to return the equipment. But for that golden brief moment, Battlestar Galactica's space battles were spectacular. In 1978, Battlestar Galactica began as a two-hour movie called Saga of a Star World, which had limited theatrical release and was repackaged into a two-hour pilot when the series was greenlit for TV. Now, when the show was greenlit, the creators wanted to cast an African-American actor named Terry Carter as Lieutenant Boomer, a hotshot Viper pilot. Unfortunately, days before the audition, Carter actually injured himself. He broke his ankle. And because of his injury, he didn't feel like he would be able to play a hotshot, you know, Viper pilot. But the producers, when they found out, they said, well, that's OK, but we still want you to be on the show. And there's actually another character that we want you to try out for. So Carter tried out for the role of Colonel Ty, who was second in command behind Commander Adama. And he was the executive officer of the Battlestar Galactica. Now, the character of Commander Adama was played by the iconic actor Lorne Green. What's interesting to me is that Although Terry Carter ended up playing Colonel Ty, the executive officer of the Battlestar Galactica, the producer still wanted to cast a black actor for Lieutenant Boomer. So they found actor Herb Jefferson Jr. And these two black men were just part of the overall inclusion because there were also prominent female characters as well. And remember, this was way back in 1978. Unfortunately, the show only had one season because of various production problems and, and, and quality of all the shows. But an interesting thing happened. When the studio tried a horrible spin-off show in 1980 called Galactica 1980, they created mostly new characters. Interestingly, Herb Jefferson Jr., who had played Lieutenant Boomer in the first show, was promoted to take Terry Carter's spot as the executive officer of the Battlestar Galactica. He was now a colonel. So now he was in second in command. And like I said, that show was horrible and was gone after one season. But later when Richard Hatch, one of the original actors of the first show, started an effort to get the studio to revisit Battlestar Galactica, he actually paid for and produced the Battlestar Galactica, the second coming trailer in 1999. And guess what he did? He got Terry Carter to return, and now Terry Carter was playing President Ty. So in the original show, you had two black male actors casted. In the horrible spinoff, one of those actors was promoted to executive officer of the Battlestar Galactica, 
and then in the Richard Hatch attempt to revive um, interest in Battlestar Galactica with his own trailer in 1999, he brought back Terry Carter and now he was playing President Ty. So the original producers and the actors always included these black male actors in these roles and even elevated them. And that brings me to the 2009 reboot, which was done by none other than Ronald D. Moore. I've talked about Ronald D. Moore in a previous video entitled Humanizing Sci-Fi and about his preference, in my opinion, to focus on the human drama versus the lofty space opera elements in traditional science fiction and fantasy. When it came time to casting the Battlestar Galactica, or BSG for short, I want you to see the picture of the cast that came out. If you blink too quick, you might miss that there are some people of color in this photo. First, Commander Adama is now played by the great Edward James Almos. Then you have Chief Terrell, a new character played by actor Galen Tyrell, and Lieutenant Boomer, who is now played by Grace Park. But you had other diversity swaps and gender culture swaps. Um, in the original series, Starbuck, which was played by Dirk Benedict, a male, was recast with Katie Sackhoff, a female, a white female, playing the character. And again, she did fine. She did fantastic in the part. But the one I want to focus on and really point out is the second in command, Colonel Ty, who was replaced by a straight white male character. This proves that Hollywood was more than willing to do this in the recent past. Instead of Ronald D. Moore staying true to the race of the original genre character, he race swapped that character with a straight white male. And Colonel Ty is now played by Paul Hogan. Nothing against Paul Hogan. He's excellent in the role, as well as Katie Sackhoff, who was cast as Starbuck. But that just goes to show that just because you swap out an existing character's race, gender, or culture, it doesn't mean that the results have to be bad. The very thing that these two YouTubers said would never happen or Hollywood would never do, Hollywood did quite frequently and without any problem in the past. We see that Hollywood has no problem swapping an established character's race, gender, culture, or even sexual orientation, depending on what their agenda is at the time. I just wanted to start this informational series to let people know Hollywood is capable of anything. I know some people are upset, but it's like, hey, join the club. Maybe now you can understand what we've been saying about Hollywood since its foundation. I have more examples coming in the near future. If you know of any examples that you'd like me to cover, please let me know in the comments and I'll see you in the next video.